Hi, Assalamu Alaikum. Today's dish is um, cannellini beans. Here they are. I have soaked them for a couple of hours. You can soak them overnight if you wish, but a couple of hours I've soaked these up and I cooked them in a pressure cooker for 10 minutes. Or you can put them in a normal pan and probably take about 40 minutes. This is them in their dry form. You look through them in case something's in there, clean them up, give them a good wash, soak them cook them and I've drained them just so that you can see how they look. I've kept the water they were cooked in, I will add it to the dish. Okay, so you can obviously cook this as a vegetarian dish and we quite often do, but today I'm going to use chicken breast. Again, I prefer chicken with bones, but my children don't really like bones, so chicken breast it is. So I have about 800 grams of chicken breast here. Two large diced onions, four medium-ish tomatoes diced. Have about 100 ml of tomato passata. You can use a couple of squirts of uh, tomato puree if you wish, but this is passata. In this plate to go in right at the end, I have a mixture of parsley and uh, coriander. One chili, it's because I saw this left in the fridge, but I would usually use a couple um, as my husband likes quite hot food but I will um, on this instant put in some chili flakes so here we like a lot of garlic so there's seven grated cloves of garlic in there you don't have to use that much if you don't like it but that's how much I put in the spices I'll be using today is the normal suspects so we have turmeric spoon and a half teaspoon and a half sorry teaspoon of paprika half a teaspoon of cumin teaspoon of cinnamon teaspoon of chili flakes, teaspoon of ginger, half a teaspoon of ras al-hanout, not too much because that can sometimes turn your dish bitter, and a teaspoon of coarse black pepper, and of course salt to taste. Okay, here we go, I'm just going to turn on. In the saucepan I already have five teaspoons, sorry, tablespoons, five tablespoons of olive oil which I'm going to fry the chicken and the spices and the vegetables in. But right at the end, when I add the coriander and the garlic and the chilli, I also add in a couple of spoons of extra virgin olive oil. That's without cooking it. I just add it in right at the end, even after I've done the garlic. Literally add it in and turn off. So you can get that flavour of olive oil. The first thing to go in is chicken. by a sprinkling of salt for now because you know you want to taste it later on and see if it's enough but right, generally I use a couple of teaspoons is enough for this particular one again I'm cooking for six people and obviously you can adjust it up or down however much you wish to cook and however many people you're cooking for it's going to take some time <coughs> Just the salt and chicken go in and the oil, lid on, leave it to fry for at least four minutes. Okay, I'm back. This is now being frying for four or five minutes. It's changed colour. Some liquid has come out of it, but it's not too bad, it's fine. So what I do is I tend to fry turmeric in with it. Yeah. Let me just put it in there. It's okay. This should hold out. Fry the turmeric like so. These will go in a bit. It's starting to smell delicious. In next the onions. Like so. And then 
I literally just put the rest of the stuff in bit by bit. All the spices go in. The satin goes in. Because the beans are cooked early and chicken breast doesn't take that long to cook, it literally takes minutes. Get all this going. Then I would put the liquid the beans had been cooked in. Got the beans at the bottom as well. this is just starting off. I might need to add some more water from the kettle in a couple of minutes. There it goes. Alright, now I'm going to lay, leave this chicken now to cook no more than about 10 minutes. Like I said, it's chicken breast. It cooks really quickly. It doesn't take that long at all. After about 10 minutes, I'm going to come back and then add the beans and give them another further 10 minutes of cooking. Okay. Okay, at this point it's been cooking for the past 10 minutes. So, I'm going to add the beans into it. Make sure they're all submerged in. This makes a lovely thick kind of stew type of tagine. You can see it's already started to thicken. At this point also the chili goes in and I'm going to put a couple of pieces, not a lot, of uh, preserved lemon. These lemons I preserved simply in mixed herbs, uh, salt, and about five different spices, I can't remember what I'm here now, and also some nice olive oil so, and I've chopped them quite thin. So I'm just going to put in about three to four pieces like that. Just gives it a nice touch and a bit of that pickling juice also goes in. Obviously normal preserved lemons are absolutely fine. That's it. Now I'm going to turn the heat, so I should say at this point also you should taste it because everything's in so you should be able to tell whether you need more salt or not. So, so. No, it doesn't need any salt. Perfect. So at this point, I'm going to turn the heat down and then leave it to simmer. It's up to you how long you want to leave it to simmer. Um, for me, it depends if I'm in a hurry or not. So, literally 10 minutes if it's like that on the medium heat, turn it down. If I turn it right down, I can leave it for up to half an hour simmering until I'm ready to serve it. I'll show at the end when I put in the coriander and the garlic and the extra virgin olive oil. Okay, so this is now been simmering very low as you can see for the past 20 minutes. And a lot of these beans, the slower you cook them, the better. So I'm going to switch it off. And then this is a very rough estimate. It's entirely up to you how much olive oil you put in. But um, yeah, it depends on how much you want. I'm just going to pour this in. Give it a good mix. And that's it. The dish is ready. Doesn't need anything else now. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to first put it in the plate and then get the bottle of oil and just squirt it all over the top. Like I said, it's entirely up to you how much oil you're going to put in at the end. Same with chili flakes. If you don't want to put chili in, you don't need to put that in. But this is, apart from adding chicken obviously, is exactly how I learned how to make it from my mother and from my two grandmothers and whatever family members were around. Haven't really changed anything apart from adding chicken, sometimes I have lamb, sometimes I have beef. It depends on what I feel like putting in there. But it's a very wholesome dish, doesn't need anything else with it, uh, apart from maybe some lovely crusty bread and a salad.
I do hope you try the dish and enjoy it. Thank you for watching. If you do enjoy it, you do try it, please. I love reading the messages I get sent. It really is wonderful to see if somebody's tried my dish. And also, please follow, like, subscribe. Thank you for watching.